Yes, now we'll discuss about the recess and choroid plexus related to third ventricle. Here you have seen the third ventricle anterior boundary, this is fornix, anterior part of the column of the fornix. Here is anterior commissure, this is lamina terminalis, this from the anterior wall. Posteriorly, here is pineal gland, posterior commissure, and the commencement of the cerebral aqueduct, it from the posterior wall. Roof is formed by ependymal lining, which extends from interventricular foramen to habineural commissure. Floor is formed by optic chiasma, tuber cinerium. Here is pituitary stalk or infundibulum. This is mammary body, posterior perforating substance, and here is tegmentum of the midbrain. And lateral wall is formed by these structures. This is diencephalon. Here is this divided into two parts by hypothalamic sulcus. Upper part is thalamus, lower part is hypothalamus. Here is thalamic connexus. And now we will discuss about the recess. These are the boundary. And now the recess. The recess are the extension of the main cavity. Here is cavity. It has some extensions. Like here, you can see here small extension towards the optic chiasma. This extension is known as optic recess. This is optic recess. It, this recess is towards the optic chiasma. This is optic recess. And the recess is here. This is infundibular recess. Infundibular recess. This is infundibular recess. And the recess is, here is pineal recess between the two lamina of the pineal star. This is pineal recess. And, and there is suprapineal recess. This is suprapineal recess. One recess is present here between anterior commissure and interventricular foramen. This is known as anterior recess here. This is anterior recess. This is also known as vulva of the ventricle. This is anterior recess. So these are five recess present in the lateral ventricle. When one important thing which is uh, here, this is tila choroidea, fold up pyometer. This fold up pyometer invaginate between this is fornix and this is thalamus. Between fornix and thalamus. This fold invaginates here. This form the tila choroidea. It is triangular in shape. If you see tila choroidea, it is triangular in shape like this. This is triangular in shape. Like this. This is fold of the pyometer. This is fold of the pyometer which invaginates, which invaginates between the fornix and thalamus. This is tila choroidea, fold of pyometer. And in this tila choroidea, there are numerous capillaries which form the plexus. These are the plexus. These plexus extend like this. These are choroid plexus. So these capillary plexus form the choroid plexus. So here choroid plexus is formed. If you cut it transverse section. So if, if you cut a coronal section of the cerebrum, you will find 
this is carpus callosum here is carpus callosum here is septum pellucidum and there is fornix this is fornix and here is position of slit like third ventricle this is third ventricle and here is caudate nucleus stria terminalis thalamostate vein and here is position of this is thalamus so this is third ventricle this is thalamus between thalamus and this is fornix between thalamus and fornix there is a gap this gap is known as choroid fissure this is choroid fissure this is choroid fissure between fornix and thalamus there is fissure this is known as choroid fissure through which this pyometer folds invaginates this is fold of the pyometer this is fold of the pyometer invaginates this diagram is same this diagram here is plexus this choroid plexus forms csf which goes into this third ventricle and here this forms csf which goes into this is lateral ventricle this is lateral ventricle so from here csf goes into lateral ventricle so this is the choroid plexus and tila choroidea this is tila choroidea the fold of pyometer fold of pyometer for tila choroidea here is a plexus of the capillaries which form the choroid plexus here choroid plexus is formed by anterior choroidal artery so this is all about the third ventricle